it's like an occupation. You see these LADWP trucks up and down our roads all day long, parked on the side, doing work. But city of Los Angeles is a couple hundred miles away, but it's here. You'll come out in the middle of nowhere and you'll see a big sign, property of city of Los Angeles, no camping. It's sad because most people of LA don't understand. All they do is turn on the water, take a shower. Even from the rich to the poor, they don't understand that every time you take water or use water, it comes from somewhere. And that somewhere it comes from, you're taking the life and the color, you're sucking those things out of a different area. And that really sad to me. Because how do you fight a big old giant six billion dollar corporation, which the LA Department of Water Power is? Every single environmental issue in the Owens Valley is related to the Los Angeles Department of Water Power's water grab. The biggest thing, obviously, is what is known as Owens Lake or Pahagua. The city of LA, um, via the Department of Water and Power, drained that lake in under a decade. Groundwater pumping in Big Pine is the most pumping that LA does in the Owens Valley. And so our water table goes down, water table goes down, trees die. That soil that our people had helped to create now becomes very light. And so it emits into the air, leaving us with just really a, a place that's becoming more and more desertified. There's arsenic, there's cadmium, there's dust itself and a variety of salts that come off of that lake bed. And people are breathing this and it gets embedded into your lungs and your lungs can't get rid of it. I mean, that's taking life away from us and leaving us sickness. I mean, there's nothing else to say besides that. Honestly, I think they should be held responsible for the people that have gotten sick since they've taken the water from the valley because they took the health of the valley and they've taken the health of the people. LADWP has a long history of doing things behind the scenes, not telling you the whole story. Even when they do try, you still have that doubt. And that's what I tell them, you've got a long history to overcome. They hold land and the economic power that's associated with that and hope that everyone will leave so that they can transform this landscape into a place that is solely for the benefit of LA. Of course, what we've talked about is this is home for my people and we're not gonna leave no matter what it's like because, because this is it, this is what we have. I can't say that we have a, a great relationship with, with Los Angeles because there hasn't been any real meaningful um, discussions and negotiations in recent years of how they can help remedy our situation that they cause. In the land exchange, LA says they have a moral obligation to the indigenous people here in the Owens Valley, but yet they haven't upheld that. You know, they're moving that water out of here as fast as they can because that's all, the same old DWP that we know. Take as much as you can, as fast as you can, because God forbid, if we don't, you know, then we might end up losing some of it. As tribal people, we look at there's a balance of life. Everything lives in a balance. You start messing with that balance, things change. And not all organisms can handle the change. What are we gonna do? There's a point where there's no return. I always had this way that I thought about Los Angeles when I was younger that I didn't like Los Angeles. And now that I'm older, I realize that it's not Los Angeles that I don't like, it's Department of Water and Power. And what changed for me was I was on a 90 mile walk from Silmar to Long Beach. I got to connect with Tongva people along the way and I got to hear their story and also realizing that Los Angeles is their homeland. Just to learn that this place that is known as the place where the water begins or the water flows for us is also the place where water flows for your people in Los Angeles and, and all the people that call Los Angeles home today.
they've been getting their water from Hyatt Lunardu since the beginning of the city of Los Angeles. And so I think that's a real significant connection we have that not a lot of people are aware of. We think we live in very different worlds, but yeah, this, this water connects us. And um, we're both very disenfranchised from the decisions that are being made on our behalf. have stories of our ancestors going to the water, praying to the water. Of course, we still honor the water. We still pray with it. We still have water ceremonies. It's a huge part of our identity. There was four sacred rivers, and today they're just cement pathways. So we can't go to the rivers anymore. They're polluted. I mean, just imagine if we could get the Los Angeles River to regrow, to breathe again, how much life it would bring into the city. One of the main issues as an indigenous Tongva woman, I'd say is the lack of knowledge about the original people of this land, the lack of respect for the land in Los Angeles. Um, and even if people know about the Tongva, there's no, like sympathy. There's no compassion. There's just like, oh yeah, I know about that, but what are you doing to fix the relationship we have? What are you doing to be an ally to us? Um, as if I, sometimes I feel like it's a trend to support indigenous people. But even within the city, the recognition that we get isn't enough. It's not reparations. It's not, it's maybe a name on a park or a street name um, and it's things that people don't understand they don't know the history of and even the stories that are told about Tongva people aren't told from an indigenous perspective. As far as I'm concerned with the United States government having a relationship with our um, nations I don't see that. I believe if we had a relationship with them there would be better conditions for our people. Uh, we would have our treaty land back. We would have more access to our sacred sites. Um, so if you ask me about a relationship between us and the government, I would have to say that there is not a relationship and the way that they have always treated us, what they see as animal, they still do. They're trying to do away with anybody being a native. It's going to be you're, you're native, you're, you might as well be Japanese, you have no claim to anything. That's what's happening for all natives. But here in California, they really, really want to get rid of us because um, um, they think we want something. You know, I guess it's because we're always looking at our stuff, wanting it back, I don't know. Uh, just all the reasons that, that they don't want to deal with us anymore. And uh, by us being extinct, they're in no hurry to, to recognize us. And I know a lot of us Tongva women are doing really fantastic, incredible, wonderful things. But it's because I'm looking real hard and listening real hard. And when we do get recognized for the work, you know, it's not recognized that somehow our identities aren't along that with it. Like, like I like to do things and, well, when I do bad things, I don't like that the tribe be taken along with me. But, you know, <laughs> on good things, that we are a tribe. And it's, it's, that just doesn't come across. Until people see it, they're not going to understand it. It's just like, who are you? My great granddaughter, two years ago, she wanted to do an extra credit project, so she interviewed me. And she asked me, what does it feel like to be a Tongva woman? And I said, I feel invisible. 40 years I've been out there, and I feel invisible. It's like a constant reminding people that we're here, right? And so she says, that's how I feel. And I said, I will not let you be invisible.